Well, good evening, everybody. Michael Soothing here. As I mentioned in another video, I thought it would be interesting to look at this uh, Time Life Mission to Mars book. And uh, I glanced through it briefly, and it is very, very interesting, especially for somebody like myself, who's always been into astronomy and spent more than four decades basically in the rocket science biz. Well, that's a little misleading. Only the last about 20 years were um, spacecraft. The rest was aerospace earlier. So, uh, but it was very similar. Here's a big... Uh, you know, launch vehicle taking off there, you know. Every now and then, one of those blows up, which is a drag, especially if you're one of the guys riding to Mars on the launch vehicle. Um, there was a really bad joke, but I'm not going to tell it, about the uh, space shuttle. You know, what color eyes did the, the astronaut have, you know, blue eyes, you know, one blue this way, one, never mind, it's just a horrible, it's not funny, that's called gallows humor, it's not really meant to be funny, it's meant to provide a little levity, and so you don't have to feel so horrible about what happened, because it was horrible, see, this is like the early days of space exploration, our journey to the moon, our buddy John Glenn just died. I was a little kid, like, when he first, you know, was one of the first guys in space. He was a test pilot. And then one of the most famous guys who went into space. Here's Buzz Aldrin walking on the moon back in 1969, you know. And uh, there's the flag there. It's not really waving in the breeze, everybody. It was, you know, put up with stiffeners like that. So these crazy uh, people who think that the moon landings were a hoax, you know, use all this really stupid argumentation like, oh, look, there's no stars in the background. It must be faked, right? They don't understand anything about photography. If you have a bright foreground object, like this guy in the spacesuit, it makes the shutter speed ultra fast uh, uh, to keep it from being overexposed, the shot, so it would never pick up the faint light from stars, okay? For that, you need a long exposure, which would make this guy look like a bright white blur if you had a long exposure would totally overpower the film. They had a bunch of stupid arguments like that, the moon hoax folks, and they're all insane, okay? Take it from someone who knows rocket science. Uh, here's the journey to Mars. These are photographs. It says here, water on the surface. The Martian landscape confirmed the existence of liquid water in the past. There could have been organisms there, right? Because there was... When the Opportunity rover landed in 2004, it discovered minerals on the surface containing spherules that NASA called blueberries. I wonder if anyone will try to eat one when they go there. What do you think, the astronaut? Eat a blueberry. Anyway, the sphericals supposedly uh, confirm that water used to be there. Live from Mars, everybody was cheering, you know, for the rover landing and stuff, that it was, it was working. The company I worked for, the parent company, built the robotics for the uh, Mars rovers and everything, so that's kind of cool. Here's one of the, uh, the rovers doing some roving. Would you like to do some roving? I think that would be kind of interesting. On a foreign planet, do you think there's any politics on a foreign planet? Like, you know, oh, 
You, you racists from Earth think you're so superior to us Martians and everything. You know, just because you have a big blue planet and we have a small red planet, you know. Hopefully, uh, space politics would be a little bit more civil than that. What do you think? And they wouldn't fall into the same traps that some of us have on Earth. Look, there's a lot of mechanisms on the, uh, the Curiosity spacecraft. Uh, so named because it's trying to figure everything out on the surface of Mars. Actually, the surface of Mars looks a lot like the terrain around Las Vegas, you know. Perhaps the Mars rover's landings were faked and they were really done in Las Vegas. What do you think? And then after the guys put the little robots out there to take pictures, they went and gambled away the space money at the casinos that they got. Um, oh, look at this. India takes flight. New to the Mars scene, the nation gets it right on the first voyage. Getting to Mars is hard, unless, of course, you're India, in which case it's apparently very easy. The U.S. failed the first time we tried to go to Mars, back in 1964. The old Soviet Union failed the first ten times it tried. Japan tried once and failed in 1998, and the European Space Agency half failed, getting a spacecraft to orbit Mars, but losing the intended landing craft. But India, on its first start out of the gate, the country got it right, following a perfect launch in 2013 with a perfect arrival in orbit around the red planet Ten months later, it would take ten months to get to Mars. From here, the spacecraft, delightfully known as MOM, for Mars Orbiter Mission, owes its success to a number of things. You know, and then it goes on to describe the technical details. Here's all the women from India and some of the guys, you know, having a little party because their space mission was successful. Don't tell anyone, but they stole all the technology, okay? I happen to know. Um, shh, don't tell anyone. Anyway, um, and if you're from India, don't hate on me, okay? I'm just making a little joke, so although there's some truth in it, but okay, anyway. Um, this shows a comparison between the moon, which is kind of small, the lunar, you know, body that circles us, and then Mars here, which is only about like a fourth the size of Earth, see, but it has the same amount of surface land area, because we're mostly covered three-fourths in ocean, right? So, see, there's just as much surface land on Mars as there is on Earth. I wonder um, if there were ever any little oceans there and any critters in them. Uh, Earth is 93 million miles from the Sun, so it would take a long time uh, to walk that distance if you had to walk here. Mars, on the other hand, is 142 million miles away from the sun. So it's going to be a little chilly on the, well, it, it's not going to, there's no atmosphere though. So it's actually going to be hot on the surface. There's nothing to really shield you. There's a little bit of atmosphere, but it's not breathable and it's pretty thin. But the good thing is, a lot less gravity. So you'd probably, if you weighed, say, 180 pounds here, not that I know anyone who weighs that much, um, you might weigh about 45 pounds on Mars, okay? Wouldn't that be cool? So uh, you wouldn't have to diet, see? It, 
a long journey. If Earth were the size of a quarter at the goal line of a football field, the moon would be the size of a pencil eraser inside the one yard line. But Mars would be about the size of a dime in the opposite end zone. So think of a quarter on the goal line at one end of a football field and then a dime on the, on the other end of the football field and that's the relative size of, uh, you know, Earth and Mars. Mars' red color comes from rusted iron on its, in its soil. Hey, maybe they had, a, you know, an old car industry a long time ago, and, and it's the old construction that's falling apart from the little Martians that used to be there, and that's where all that iron comes from. Anyway, where's the water, it says. Along with water ice at the northern and southern polar caps, oh, by the way, do you know that the polar ice caps on Mars are shrinking? It's true. There's global warming on Mars. I wonder if it's CO2. Maybe there are critters there underground, you know, running machinery and stuff, putting CO2 into the air. Um, yeah, there's actual global warming on Mars, believe it or not. Um, also, there is on some of the other planets, I might add. So, one of the theories about global warming is that the sun emits varying levels of intensity in the spectrum of its output and radiation. And uh, when that intensity goes up, it warms the planets a little bit. And when it goes down, they cool off a little bit, leading to ice ages. Temperature ranges on Earth um, it shows here the extremes on Mars. We range from minus 126 Fahrenheit, that's pretty cold, that must be Antarctica, to 136 Fahrenheit, with an average temperature of 57 degrees. See there, the big thermometer? But on Mars, the excursion is much colder, all the way down to minus 284 Fahrenheit and the average temperature is minus 81 degrees. Wow. So I guess even in the sun it's very cold on Mars. Um, Mars's moons. Mars has two little moons named Phobos and Diamos. One, Phobos is only 14 miles across, you know, just like an asteroid. It's not even big enough to form itself into a sphere, really. And Diamos is only 8 miles across. They're not very big. And a Martian year is really long because it, take, it completes a revolution around the sun in 687 days. So a 30 year old on Earth would only be 15 years old on Mars. So once again, if you're like 60 years old here, you'd only be 30 on Mars, okay? So uh, that would be nice. Except I don't think you'd stay you know, looking like a 30 year old. A brief history of not going. This is like past plans to go that didn't come to fruition, I think. And let's see here. What else? Six decades of trying. And here are stories about the new refrigerator is a little bit noisy, isn't it? By the way, if you're old enough to remember that show, in black and white days from the 1960s, my favorite Martian, then you're as old as I am, okay? It was this guy who arrived in a funky looking spacecraft and he had these two antennas that would come up behind his head. It was one of the worst 
uh, effects, you, special effects you would ever see in your life. It was really funny. It was like someone stood behind him with t a t an old TV antenna, the rabbit ear kind, and like slowly lifted it up, right? And it would be shaking a little bit. But the whole show was quite humorous, uh, intentional or not. Uh, here's a nice timeline of all the various... I'm not going to go through them all in detail because I would fall asleep myself and I'm only wanting to put you asleep. This shows various areas of where we have gone on Mars and explored. Yeah, all the different spots that have been visited by different rovers and landers and things like that, explorer spacecraft. Here's a nice summary of all the different kind of spacecraft. Here's one from the Soviet Union, the Korobel 4. See that one? It looks a little like R2-D2, doesn't it? Maybe that's where the inspiration came from. It is believed to be the Soviet Union's first attempt at a planetary probe, although some scientists involved with the Soviet space program claim to have no knowledge of this mission. It reached an altitude of about 74 miles. In other words, it was really a spy uh, spacecraft, not a planetary probe. But anyway, um, the Mariner 4 uh, took pictures of planets from space. Here's the U.S. Mariner 4. And what else do we have? All kinds of them. Mariner 6 and 7. You know, did anyone watch the movie 2001, A Space Odyssey? I think the movie has something like seven minutes of dialogue in the entire film. But it's a visual masterpiece with an interesting musical score. Um, oh look, Japan sent an orbiter called Nosomi. See, there's Japan's orbiter uh, going around Mars. And uh, there was a Mars climate thing, measuring climate change on Mars, see? So, um, I'm sure it's due to human activity if there's climate change on Mars. Probably the rovers, you know, heating up the planet somehow. Uh, let's see here. Mars Global Surveyor. Oh, look. Mission possible. About half of all Mars missions have succeeded. Here is a complete history up to the ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter. And this shows Earth, and these bars represent all the different missions to Mars, some of which succeeded, and some of which, of course, did not. Did I just whap myself? I think I did. Um, the first man-made object to land on Mars was Mars 3 Orbiter Lander. Uh, but it was, it lost contact 20 seconds after touchdown. That's because it was stolen by Martians, you know, who wanted to investigate and uh, research what it was. Maybe reverse engineer it and um, build a bunch of them to send back to us for us to buy cheap, you know, imported goods, you know. Neighbors in the sky. Oh, look. Uh, a little discussion about some of the other planets in our solar system. The love and attention that Mars gets from Earthlings makes sense. The planet's proximity and biological potential render it irresistible. Yet there is a marble bag of colorful globes orbiting the sun. A marble bag. That must be a very, very big marble bag. Um, 
and NASA has sent spacecraft to every planet plus Pluto. I don't know if you realize Pluto's not really, it got demoted. Poor Pluto thought it was a planet for a long, long time. And then it got demoted to like a subplanet or an exoplanet or a planetoid or something like that. Um, anyway, it's no longer considered, you know, it must have done something to offend uh, the larger planets. And so it's excluded now. Um, maybe it was uh, having a lot of atmospheric flatulence or something. But anyway, each of these celestial bodies has taught scientists about the origin of the solar system and by extension, the universe. All right, so Mercury, Mercury is like the small, it's the closest to the sun, Mercury. You wouldn't want to be there because I think it's um, distance from Earth, 48 million miles. Uh, its outer layers have been blowtorched away by the sun because it's so close to the sun. Its core is mostly iron, you know, so we could make steel there if it wasn't so hot. Here's Venus, distance from Earth, a mere... 26 million miles, which is why it's so bright. It's called the evening star and the morning star, depending on when you see it, of course. How long it would take to get there? Four months. It has a runaway greenhouse effect. The surface temperature tops 860 degrees Fahrenheit. That must be what hell is like. It's mostly carbon dioxide atmosphere is 90 times as thick as Earth. Ooh, nasty. I don't think there's life on Venus, but if there is, it must be adapted to some pretty harsh environmental conditions. Um, do you remember that song also from the 60s? Or maybe the early 70s? I'm your Venus. I'm your fire and your desire. So maybe it got its inspiration from how hot Venus is. Jupiter, distance from Earth, 483 million miles. I believe it's the biggest gas giant in the solar system, but one of the least dense because it's mostly gas. Have you ever known any people that were mostly gas, I have. They have less mass to them, you know, especially up here. Okay, anyway, Saturn, distance from the Earth, 874 million miles. That's pretty far, farther than I can walk in a day or two. Um, how long to get there? It would take three years and uh, two months to get there. Remember in 2001, Space Odyssey, they had a mission to Jupiter that took, yeah, three years, I think, um, before they got all sucked up by the black monolith into the uh, weird celestial acid trip of a star journey uh, that transcended time and space. Good effects for its day. Very, very clever. No computer-generated graphics then. Stanley Kubrick had to do it all with extremely clever, resourceful, and creative techniques. Um, it was the groundbreaking film for special effects and sci-fi. Okay, do I have to hear any bad jokes about this planet? Do I? Do I have to hear any bad jokes about this planet? Tell me I don't. Okay. So, uh, I like kind of like the color. It, it is like a big blue marble, isn't it? Um, not much to it, though. It's a gas giant, the victim of one or more space collisions billions of years ago. Knocked the planet on its side. 
A fragmentary ring circles the equator. Oh, in Saturn's rings, we forgot the famous rings of Saturn. Um, total 175,000 miles from inner to outer edge. Three quarters of the way from Earth to the moon. Yeah, the moon, by the way, is about 220,000 miles away from us. That's pretty far. Neptune. And Neptune is the, is that the Greek god or the Roman god of the ocean? I don't know. Anyway, see how, maybe it's because of how blue Neptune is. It's so far from the sun. It's 2.8 billion miles. So it doesn't get to reflect very much light because it's so far. It needs 165 years to orbit the sun once. So if you live to be a hundred, you know, you'd be less than half a year old on Neptune. But it rotates really fast. Uh, every 15 hours it rotates, so it's spinning pretty fast. Oh, and bring, it says, bring earmuffs because it is minus 360 degrees, one of the coldest spots in the solar system. Pluto, 3.7 billion miles from Earth. There's Pluto. And uh, isn't Pluto a dog in a Disney cartoon? I wonder how this planet, planetoid, or whatever it's called now, got its name. Um, it would take nine years and six months to get there on the fastest spacecraft currently. And, uh, it's, oh, it's been demoted to a dwarf planet. Okay, so I think the little people are gonna complain about this. I don't know. And then there's, uh, some moons that go around Jupiter. 173 moons in total go around all of our planets in the solar system. I didn't know there was quite that many. Did you? That's a lot of moons. Um, one of the biggest is Europa. And uh, I believe that one goes around Jupiter. There's the surface. Some say it's made out of ice. A big ball of ice and it could have an ocean underneath the crust. Um, and then we have Enclidius and Cleodus, which is also a frozen ball that supposedly could have an ocean of liquid water underneath the crust. Makes for some interesting speculation, you know. Speculation. Crash landing. What's that about? The sharp rim of this impact crater formed when a meteorite hit Mars. See there? I think what they meant to say was, see, even the scientists who write books like this get it wrong. A meteorite did not hit Mars. It would be a meteor that would hit Mars. And then once the fragments were like scattered around in the surface crust and became rock uh, or whatever, whatever's left of the meteor that hits Mars, that's called meteorite, okay? So this is a frequent error that people make. They look in the sky and go, look, a meteorite, you know? So anyway. NASA's next steps. This will be interesting to Elon Musk in his endeavor to fly to Mars. He wants to be the first man to go there. And his competitors in the car business are all for it. They say, yes, let's put him on a spacecraft tomorrow and send him to Mars. Uh, here's where they train, like, is it in Alaska? Um, 
earthly astronaut at a simulated Mars base. This is probably in New Zealand or someplace. And habitat, it doesn't say, but see, they have these habitats in some frozen wasteland someplace where they're simulating and training for what it would be like in Mars. A year in space. Astronaut Scott Kelly, with two cosmonauts, returns to Earth near Kazakhstan in March of 2016. Hey, that's when my birthday was. Here they come back down with a giant parachute. All right. Um, what else? You know, juggling would be easy in really low ground. As this picture indicates. See there? Doing some juggling. What else is in here? How to sneeze in space. That's a little bit of a disgusting thought because if you sneeze in space, the droplets are going to float all around the cabin for hours, right? So it's like. They have to have special mechanisms. How space affects the human body. The effect on various organs and stuff. This might be kind of interesting to read. I think my son will be very interested in reading this. Is it possible to get food poisoning from space food? Um, what about heart attacks, etc.? What if you have an appendix burst? Um, yeah, all these kinds of things, you know. Rocket business. Oh, there's a shot of Elon Musk at SpaceX. I haven't previewed this magazine, so, or this book, so I, I was yakking about him, and there he is. Entrepreneurs and their companies. Can one of these commercial giants get us to Mars? Because that's Elon Musk's plan, you know. Olympus Mons, the solar system's highest peak. Do you know Mars has the tallest mountain in the solar system? It's much tall. See, there's nothing to erode mountains there. doesn't have wind and stuff enough to, uh, enough water and sand and wind to erode the mountain down quickly. So there's a little bit of weather there, but not very much. Um, SpaceX, Virgin Galactic, Boeing, leading space companies here listed down there. You know, someplace. I don't know if you can see it. But um, SpaceX has done pretty well, but they've also blown up some of their uh, spacecraft trying to use, you know, sea launch and stuff like that. Mars Allure. Mars draws us in with its potential and mystique. Mars art, vibrant eruptions. Um, I'm going to leave the comments to others because uh, nothing that comes into my mind looking at this is anything but disgusting. So I don't want to, you know, this looks like an impact crater on the moon, but I guess it's on Mars some of their excellent photography they've done with orbiters orbiting the planet. A crater named Gale. I used to know someone named Gale, spelled G-A-Y-L-E. A little different than the normal spelling. See, if you look at this, it looks like water flowed and eroded there, right? So that's interesting. 
Now my back is starting. I'm not in a comfortable chair. My next video, I'm going to get my comfy chair over here. Infrared mosaic. This crater is captured in infrared wavelengths. Makes for a nice visual effect, doesn't it? Sliding into home plate. Have you ever seen the face on Mars? Yeah. When they had a low-res picture of it, it looked like a face. But when they took a better picture, it didn't look anything like that. So, and of course, all the uh, lunatics said it was a big cover-up. There was really, you know, uh, some kind of settlement right there that made the face and everything. But uh, it's fun to believe in those things, isn't it? What's this? This doesn't look like life on Mars to me, does it to you? That, I don't know why that's in there. Just for a little gratuitous romance, maybe? Oh, Ray Bradbury's classic short story collection, The Martian Chronicles, was published in 1950. See, back then they thought we'd be going to Mars pretty soon, you know? They didn't realize just how tough it would be. Um, remember they wrote uh, The War of the Worlds, you know, the, the, and then Orson Welles starred in the film. Well, look, remember the Bugs Bunny Martian guy? Uh, Bugs and him would have a little warfare going on in space. That was pretty funny. And uh, who's this guy trying to imitate? Oh, David Bowie. The man who fell to earth or something. Yeah. Will man outgrow the earth? Here's a 1952 cover story. Time magazine. Look at those old interesting graphics. And the, uh, the article apparently was all about how we would maybe go to Mars soon. Here is an observatory professor looking at the moons on Mars for the first time. You know, Phobos and Diamos. So, uh, an old picture of a giant telescope. So, uh, an old quote from a famous Greek philosopher finishes up on the back cover. And it says, Astronomy compels the soul to look upward and leads us from this world to another. So, I don't know about you, but I've always been fascinated by astronomy. When I was a kid, I had a Time Life book about the planets, and I used to look through that book all the time and daydream about space, you know, and the universe and everything. So, I hope you enjoyed this little foray into um, the red planet. And I hope it has put you to sleep by now. But if it has not, don't ASMR and drive. We'll be back with more videos. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Don't ASMR. Oh, I said that already.